Saik. You are tuned in to Sundogs present Local Vibes. We are Sundogs, your two favorite canines. Bow wow. The gruesome twosome. Ho, ho, ho. How are you? Scared now that we're growling at you. Dang, that was a scary show. Uh, even if you're not scared, follow us at Sundogs TC. Uh, we are joined in the studio uh, by Solana. Hey, what's up, boys? How you doing? I'm doing good. How y'all doing? We're doing very, very well. Again, we really appreciate... Uh, you taking the time out to sit down with the pups. Anytime, every time, man. You can follow him at Sola Escobar, correct? Correct. S-O-L-A-E-S-C-O-B-A-R. That's the one. Uh, as well as um, iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, mostly everything. Yeah, I'm everywhere. Everywhere. S-O-L-A-N-A, Solana. Yeah. This is his third appearance on the show, if... Uh, You've been living under a rock. <laughs> Last time we had you on was in uh, January, I think. Yep, New Year's Day. It was New Year's Day. Uh, That's right. A little yeah. uh, phone call. Yep. We'll talk. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. We got to go through some business. Let's do it. But we want to let everyone know that we're sitting down with the great Solana. Before us, you were listening to the ninety-four point one FM WFNU Music Rotation. Right. If you have any clean songs and you are a, a clean and radio edited songs and uh, you're from Minnesota, send them to station manager at WFNU.org and if they will put have, them in the rotation. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you okay. have uh, clean hip hop or R&B songs, send them to with the canines. Send them, to, send them to sundogstc at gmail.com. Let me reiterate, radio edited versions of your songs to sundogstc at gmail.com. Bef- or after us here on WFNU, Friday nights are hot again with Sundogs present kicking and Sundogs present local vibes kicking you off at 6 p.m. That's right, then from more- 6 to 7. And then at uh, 9 o'clock, we've got Get the Gravy Hot with Call Dagburn. Or shoot, right after us is more of the music rotation. Even better reason to send in your songs. But then 9 o'clock, get your gravy hot because we know it's been getting cold. Uh, Basic Beats with DJ Dom Terrace is Fridays at 10. Uh, Club 120 Plus is at 11 on Fridays uh, with the replay. And make sure to catch The Midday Escape with Philip Gracia live Fridays at noon. Replays Thursdays at noon. The Morning Program with Dr. Rick Burnett is Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays and Fridays at 7 a.m. The Extra Dimension with Ian R. Buck is Sundays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. And uh, hits in history. Oh, 651 Sports Update with Mike Resendez. Saturdays at 10 a.m. I hear he might be the uh, volleyball announcer for uh, the Gophers. No I know. way. Uh, uh, so he's fingers crossed up. for him. Yeah, seriously. Talon Frazier Motivational Talks, Thursdays at 3. And hits in histories of the 60s, 70s, and 80s with Dr. Rick Burnett is live Mondays at midnight and replays Sunday, Monday, <laughs> or Saturday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at midnight. Evolation with Dr. Rick Burnett and Mr. Zero, Wednesdays at noon and Fridays at 8 a.m. And then Funk to Your Ears is Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and Saturdays at 7 p.m. Shout out to our phenomenal station managers, our volunteers for their hard work behind the scenes, uh, production, uh, relocating to a phenomenal new facility. Um, so yeah, they like, don't. They don't sit back. They're always reaching for the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. It's a great environment to be in. So thank you. A few other phenomenal shows here in the Twin Cities, highlighting Twin Cities music is the Soda Sound Radio Program, hosted by uh, Half Pint and Nacho Suave of the of the B and E Crew. Thursdays at six. I believe you can find the archive of that on Facebook. And uh, on the the B and E YouTube channel, uh, the Walrus the Human Show. Uh, he's interviewing hip hop uh, peeps as well. Chopping it up with pops. Uh, Facebook Live. You can find all those episodes. Uh, the Mini Rapless podcast with Logan Michaels is on YouTube. And the DJ Buster Baxter show. You can find that on Mixcloud. Uh, we've got another great show today. Do we talk about how to listen live already? I don't believe so. Oh, shoot. A um, little bit more information. Yes. Listening live to the show. Uh, it's easy to do if you live in the Frogtown area, 94.1 FM uh, on your radio. Boom. 
live. Uh, Fridays at 6, replays at 3. Uh, another way to listen live, wfnu.org slash live. And then the live 365 app. Three easy ways. And then if you've got YouTube, you can be doing that live hey, as well. Exactly. Sundogs TC is the YouTube page. Fridays 6 to 7 is also the perfect time to be calling in. The studio line is 651-313-5125. Last week, we got to sit down with Destiny Roberts. Uh, and next week, we get to sit down with Nacho Suave Bay. But enough, enough of Nacho Suave Bay, but enough about them. Exactly. We're sitting down with Solana. Yeah. Exactly. He's Give been a- on a handful of times. If you want to check out the episodes that he's been on before, um, go to anchor.fm slash local vibes, and we've got all of the audio archives there. And I believe your last appearance, although via phone, is on uh, YouTube as well. Oh, nice. nice. So an- anchor.fm slash local vibes, as well as youtube.com um, Sundogs TC. And we were saying the studio line is 651-313-5125 if you want to ask Solana a question. Now is the time to do it. Love, <laughs> If you don't swear, we'll put you on the air. If you don't know what a phone call is, follow Solana at Sola Escobar. Instagram's uh, your predominant uh, social media that Definitely. management yeah. uses. Excellent. Yeah. 651-313-5125. Follow Sundogs at Sundogs TC. Uh, our email is also sundogstc at gmail.com if you want to get us uh, any radio edited songs, if you want to uh, nominate someone to be interviewed, if you have events you would like shouted out on the show. Speaking of, Juice Lord has his show on the 24th, hour long set with the live band. Ooh. The KPW's show. Also on the 24th. Uh oh. Clashing. Maybe mm-hmm. the same show. Hopefully they're right next Amsterdam. to each other so you can check this out This is at both. the Amsterdam Bar and Hall in St. Paul. Oh, I've never been there. Nor have I. I'm always thinking When we of... have more information, we'll shout that out <laughs> next right, week for right, sure. Right. Again, follow Solana at Sola Escobar. We're going to get right into it. Exactly. Cut the beat. Let's get serious. <laughs> Solana. Yeah. What up? Thank you for coming back. Man, it's good to be here. I had... I mean, I was excited to do this in person. Yeah, I had no idea you guys upgraded like this. this I mean, bad. we're yeah, just like the station managers here yeah. at WFNU. We like <laughs> to uh, just keep keep getting better every week. At least try to improve the show in yeah. one aspect every week. So it's it's a pleasure to sit down with you in this new new environment. Yeah, this is beautiful. Like we were saying, your last appearance was via phone from California on the first of this year. That's right. For that, was at the old location on May twenty fourth, twenty nineteen. Man, isn't that crazy to think about? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're definitely a uh, a vet, a vet of the show. Thank you yeah. so much. For so, yeah, yeah, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, man, that's good. What uh, what's the update, man? Um, the update is. I mean, I assume you've been working hard because that's the predominant theme that came out from our two previous interviews is your work ethic. For sure. Just as continual, it sounds like. For sure. So one big proponent of that is I was, um, this year, I was awarded a grant through the state. So I was, like, really able to, like, just do music, like, full time. Um, Exactly what we want to talk to you about for this hour. (laughs) Exciting! Congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, from what we know, which is very little, it is. It's hard work to get a grant. You gotta uh, get your name in the right hats, get the mm-hmm. info on them. It's pretty much knowing the scoop and then uh, the grant writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the application process. Uh, yeah, that was definitely like I'd never like written an essay since like college, which is a long time ago, <laughs> and uh, so that part of it wasn't very enjoyable but like the the ends i was like well this is worth it to just like sit here for like two days and type this thing out yeah. and um, i'm sure get to make you think about why you make music and what i mean what was what was a what was a heavy question you can remember from well a heavy part of the essay question i should say for sure so i think a theme that came up that not many people know is that I'm Latino from South America, but I was adopted. Okay. So 
it's something that I do know other adopted people from South America, but generally it's not a life that many people know or like can relate to. So that was something that I talked about in my grant writing. Besides that, uh, for musicians at least that I found is what they're looking for is you just have to have content already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's kind of a catch 22. It's like, well, I want money to make music videos, but you got to show them that you already did. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, but um, I've been funding my own projects before. So I had a, a catalog to show them like exactly this is what I can do. Yeah, there's some cool French or Latin term for that, I believe. Yeah. M O. No, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Not M O. Something cool. We'll figure it out during the break. <laughs> but um, I I would assume to be given this grant money that just not streamlined things, but changed the game. I would assume made you think about um, how you write and then finalize and produce a song. For sure. And to be completely honest, like around like Christmas time this past Christmas, I was like in a very precarious place where I was like, I don't know what I want to do just in general, like with my life. And part of it was I was like, I don't know if I want to keep pursuing music like this, like keep putting all my time into it. And like, mm-hmm. um, so then receiving that was like nice, like reassurance. It's like, well, for this year, Please I have to do it this time. year. So that's so awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's been fun. That's huge. Yeah. And it, uh, have you found it um, more motivation to do it? Or have you been like, well, I've already got the the dough from this. Like, <laughs> let's chill. Do you think it's motivated you or kind of uh, taken the push factor from behind you away? It's motivated me. I have not used any of the money on just pleasurable items. That's awesome. Good. <laughs> Yeah, on record for sure. Um, yeah, no, it's a great motivator. I think anything, like when things are going good, like when people like respond to your emails and you're getting put in playlists, that's a better, like then that motivates me. Like, oh, I'm going to like research other playlists to get into. And when people say no, then I'm like, uh, I give up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like. So for uh, new artists or aspiring artists here in Minnesota, who mm-hmm. is who the Sundogs care about the most, um, yeah. what advice would you give for even like finding grants? Or how did you even hear that you could get a grant for music? I just saw I just saw a retweet. Like someone had like retweeted Dessa, and she had like posted like there's this grant for um, one of the criteria was people of color. And I looked at it. I was like, all right, I'll do that. Um, so, but things are out there. So I actually, I applied for one last week through the cultural, Cedar Cultural Center. Very so, cool. So there's stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and just go for it. I'd actually also seen a Mac Miller, Mac Miller's estate has a, a grant That's that awesome. you can apply for. So like, I haven't done it yet, but I'll do it next week probably and, uh, how are you finding these grants is it just like word of mouth really or just like the, stony um, wikipediaing or the internet i would say um internet yeah <laughs> the internetting of my um i would yeah so the fir- the one that i received i just came across it on twitter uh cedar cultural center i had a friend tell me about it he had won it before so oh, okay. about it. David the Skivvy. Yeah. He did. Honestly, like he came through big. Like he did way more than he had to to set me up with applying. Nice. Um and then the Mac Miller thing, I think I just saw it online. I was like, I I'm gonna apply for that. Why not? So Exactly, why not? Yeah, the two the two juicy, juicy uh how do I make a living doing this, uh secrets that I've heard, grants that blew my mind. I was like, Oh no way, like got to be spending at least a day every month trying to get those bad boys <laughs> and then um throwing shows for colleges a lot of money yes and if you can program they <laughs> yeah
Uh, we gotta take a break here in a little bit, but before that, we're gonna. I was gonna ask if any of the grant money was used to uh, produce and or finalize this new track that your people sent over. Yes. We can talk about oh, that. Maybe exactly. tease them. Yes. That's uh, that's cool. It's uh, cool to see a, a product come to fruition through that. Through, I mean, diligence is the word that keeps popping up in my head is being sensitive to resources to find these grants to having a back catalog you're saying was kind of important showing them i am you know a semi-established artist yeah um versus i'm just gonna use all this money for frivolous things of course yeah um that's it's just so fascinating and i look forward to at the end of the show playing this new um, Grant Field Project. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, thank you again for having your people send those our way. Of course. Um, we're going to take a break here in a little bit. Yeah, exactly. If you're just joining uh, us, we're sitting down with Solana. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got two whole minutes left. So Solana's uh, Instagram, Sola Escobar. Um, on, he's on anything you listen to music on, Solana, S-O-L-A-N-A. He's got a new, a new song we're about to play today, right? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, you've been dropping stuff like crazy. I really appreciate the consistency where it's not like, hey, whatever happened to this, and then boom, hit us with an <laughs> album. It's just like, no. So he's always got something new for you to listen to. Uh, you've been getting on the radio a lot. That's cool, doing different interviews and stuff. And we're yeah. happy to have you back here. Yeah, it feels good. Definitely. Sure. Uh, check out Solana's past interviews at uh, anchor.fm slash local vibes and we've got uh, his last phone interview on YouTube as well. Mm-hmm. Nice. Sundogs TC. Make sure to follow us uh, across most social media at Sundogs TC. Give us a call on the studio line 651 313 5125. 651-313-5125. We will put you on the radio if you promise not to swear. You can ask Solana a question. You can Jerry Springer him, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I'm the mother of your child. Oh, <laughs> surprise. And I can encourage people do to like... do that to our successful guest. I mean, a whole hour of prank calls would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever watch those uh, crank caller or whatever. Crank uh, Yankers. Shows. Crank Yankers is that what it was? I think so. That was mm-hmm. the show at least. But mm-hmm. I, most radio shows, morning programs will have a crank call. Yeah. Nah, my producers are saying, don't even, uh, don't even think about what you're thinking about. It's all right. <laughs> um, we're gonna be right back. Sundogs present local vibes.
to Sundogs Present Local Vibe. Oh, wow. If you're just joining us, we are sitting down with S O L O A N A. Right? Yeah, that's Solana. Solana for you. Solana, excuse me. Follow Solana at Sola, S O L A, Escobar, E S C O B A R. And again, we are uh, yeah, graced by his presence thricely. Yeah. If you're, if you're just tuning in, we were talking about grants mm-hmm. in the first little chunk of the show. That's very cool. Um, but let's talk about... What did you just click? I record so we can capture this audio. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. No you said let's talk about... Um, the new track? Uh, just... um. I was going to talk about like song songwriting stuff or like... Uh, so you're... You've made a bunch of songs. Yeah. Um, what, uh, like, let's say you're about to make a song with your homie who you're going to hang out with this mm-hmm. weekend that you were talking about uh, off air. Uh, how, or like, what's your preferred way to make a, to make a song? Whether it's like finding a beat and then writing to it, or like freestyling over a random beat and then finding a beat that it fits to. Like, what, what would it be like if you were to make a song? What's your what's your songwriting style like? I would say something recently that is becoming more of what I like is something unplanned, like where I go to record with somebody and maybe there's like a sketch of an idea, but not a completed song. I like to like kind of feel it out there. And I do like to work with engineers or producers who also write, who can help me be like, oh, use that part for the hook, move this here. Let's rewrite a bridge. Um, I like that. Like, I have no problem, like, being like, nah, this is my vision. Like, I like, uh, like, help, like, finding new things. That's cool. I also find, like, the cooler melodies and rhythms happen. uh, Extemporaneously? Yeah, versus, like, where there's something that, like, I spent, like, a month, like, perfecting it in my room. Then I go Mm -hmm. to the studio. When I do that, it's more, like, strictly on beat. Um so I've come to c- kind of like, I like to do it um, spontaneously and more like kind of in the moment. Heck yeah. Definitely. We, uh, we get that with freestyling versus or whatever. Where it's like my flows are way better when I'm freestyling <laughs> than when I'm just like writing it down. It's not like eight syllables every time like it is when I'm writing it down. It's yeah. like more just like flowy, riding the beat. like For sure. Feeling it in your soul. You yeah, know? exactly. So that's huge. Yeah, perhaps a little... Uh, yeah, a little improv might start to this weekend. Yeah. What's your, do you, would you just record that session via your phone or like a task cam room mic and then go back and perfect, take out some of the melodies you guys liked? Or would you say, let's stop, kind of write stuff, or just jam little 64 measure ditties until you guys need to have a smoke break or a bathroom break? I would say I've done it, you know, all those different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Ideally... I'm picturing you at a grand piano. Just (laughs) (laughs) Ideally, I like if the mic and, like, the preamp we're using is, like, good enough, like, these takes are going to work. Because I think there's something about, like, the first time you do something. You can, and I have, recreated it, like, later. Like, oh, I'll go record it in a better studio. Um... A lot of times you miss that, like, the moment a little bit. You can recreate it, but it's a different moment. Um, So I like if whatever the setup is, is like that will be the take. Um, And um, that being said, a lot of my stuff is, like, just me in my room alone and, like, definitely, like, thought over. Mm -hmm. Um. Are you still, like, uh, monkeying around beats and stuff? Like, making beats yourself? Of course, yeah. Um, I would say since COVID, I got way more into sampling myself. Um, Because I I had sang over, uh, like, sample sample beats before, but it it wasn't something I made. I've gotten more into that. I still play guitar, incorporate that into my music. Okay. Uh, Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, so you're talking about preamps, and uh, I don't know if everybody listening knows what a preamp is, but uh, that is 
What does it do? It uh, makes the sound better before it goes into whatever is recording it. Kind of like a compressor, kind of like a normalizer, and then like a, it digitizes the analog sound into a digital format. Kind of like if you took a stack of $100 bills and lit them on fire. No, I'm just kidding. What? It does. <laughs> just because the preamps are expensive. Is what oh, I'm yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just like, so yeah, you're telling me I can record without one or I can spend a lot of money and record with one, but uh, preamps... Um, do you have any favorites or anything? Any yeah, for the Apple secret sauce studio? you would? Uh... Um, no, I mean I say that, but like I'm in no means like I don't even I don't even have a preamp at home. <laughs> yeah. But I understand that it's an important thing to for the quality recording. Yeah, because I think so. I sing, and I think that myself am like a an average singer, but the tools of technology and equipment can like you know really make an upper pop. middle a man upper middle class singer oh know? yeah people are like <laughs> no, man this song's so to good. move up to the upper echelon to um to watch engineers do what they do it's yeah like watching a wizard make a potion yeah it's it's fascinating it is it is really cool um do you is this new song uh with that same writing partner out in california or is it um is there any collabs with people in minnesota on that Besides the people of Minnesota's money in the form of a grant. <laughs> I know. All y'all. All y'all made this happen. Um, yeah, so my I have a song, Redondo Beach, that comes out on Monday. And this was written in California with my with Brandon Butner, who I've worked with. Um, and yeah, he contributed greatly. Uh, he helped me write lyrics. He helped me write structure. Um, he made the bridge to the song. Um, I don't so. mean to interrupt, but for people who don't for 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 people who don't know what a uh, bridge is, <laughs> what what is a uh, what is a bridge? Just because we like to inform people here on this show. Of course, I mean I look at the bridge as like you've already consumed a majority of the song. The vibe has been set, and then this is kind of like a palate cleanse just give you a little taste of something else and then a lot of times you return to the hook or something after the bridge a little yeah switch up in percussion or perhaps removal of instruments i yeah. like how yeah it's a good uh allegory yeah palate cleanse yeah nice well thank you very much we're sitting <laughs> down here with professor solana yeah. <laughs> um he it's casual friday here in the dog house yeah, again, well, thank you for coming down. Of We're gonna keep grilling you with questions. I love it. Um, so the at home studio or at home setup you do have, you said, is kind of bare bones and kind of enough for you to be able to at least do vocals, um, or at least uh, do demo versions so you can send them um, out west or to production partners. I'm not sure who you work with uh, for post production. Correct. Or if, you, or if you do it yourself. Correct. Um, yeah, my at-home setup is, I would say, I would say it's for writing purposes. Um, so demos, I do lava lamp. Yeah, <laughs> I do have. I have one song that I use the vocals for my room because it was like April twenty twenty, so like right in the thick of like this quarantine thing. So I was like, whatever. Like I'm not gonna go to a studio anytime soon that I know of. So, but um. Yeah, so I demo things. Then I have access to a couple studios in Minnesota, or I'll record in California uh, when I'm out there. Very nice. Yeah. And I think we may have asked you uh, on the first when you called in from California. When you're out there, it's typically a business trip. Maybe a little leisure for a meal or for an evening, but usually it's just hustle, 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 video shoot, recording stuff, writing stuff. I would assume. Correct. I like to kind of do like the first four days is business, and then I have four days to like go to the beach. A half and half. I like that. You always got yeah. to have a good balance of leisure in there. You said you were out there this spring or late this spring? Uh, yeah, mid-May. Yeah. Yep. Again, I would assume a, a leisurely visit and a business visit. Same exact thing. Yeah, so I spent like four or five days in Silver Lake, which is kind of like the uptown area. So I was just kind of like locked away in my uh, hotel room. 
smoking and like making things hit the studio one day and then we had a video shoot for my song redondo beach Mm -hmm. um and then the last four days i was just at redondo beach like just like going out to eat catching a buzz is that video video out yet or just the little trailer snippet monday it'll be out but the trailer with the drone in the ocean uh, yeah that that is from the video you're talking about oh yeah pretty pumped Video drops Monday as well. Yeah. The oh yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. It looked like a hoot. I'm sure it was a, a, a half a day of shooting at least, but uh, yeah, it was fun. I'm excited to see the video <laughs> and for listeners to hear this song, this exclusive drop here on Sundogs Present Local Vibes. Yeah, except for the th- snippet in. This the, will be uh, the first time the song's played. Yeah, for sure. Oh. So excited. Thank you so much for uh, thinking of us. Yeah. Your uh, management also sent over uh, a past single we've played on the show, Pink Champagne. Yes. And um, was that recorded at all out in California? Or I mean, it's, a lot of your music has that hazy California lo-fi bu- like vibe, you know what yeah. I mean? And that's what I really dig because um, yeah. it blends so well with your singing voice. Um, yeah, does Pink Champagne have California roots as well? Even, um, even in the writing, it was mixed in. It was mixed in California. Um, A little California zest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I guess a lot of it was written here. Um, my other other collaborator, uh, Baby Boy Blue, is in New Jersey, but I think he just moved to Philadelphia. New Jersey. Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah. Um, he also contributed on that song, so he played the bass. He did some keyboards, uh, some other things like the harp in the song. But um, for Redondo Beach, for Pink Champagne, I know. But oh. for I'm asking for Redondo Beach, any studio musician collabs again that you did in other uh, songs, or was it just uh, the two of you? It was the uh, engineer and yourself. Yeah, it was just the two of us for Redondo Beach, yeah. Nice. And then uh, I was wondering if you've been, like, leaning towards um, singles versus doing a whole album, if that's still your uh, state of mind, you're still what you uh, believe to be the best way to release your art. Um, it's still... I've still been doing singles, though I would say... Recently, I've been thinking about doing a doing a project. Um, what uh, what's drawn you into that? What uh, what are the benefits? Do you think of having a project? Well, to be honest, I th- I can't remember if this was on air or off air when we were talking about this. But when I was going through a, a crisis of like, do I want to continue doing music? Part of me was like, well, maybe I'll do a project, and then be done. <laughs> Oh, so you can retire <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Um, I do think, I do, I still do think like a s- singles are a good way to like have your, you know, fully polished song, have a video, have artwork, things that accompany it. And you can push that heavily for like two weeks and then let it, you know, keep submitting it places for like a month or two afterwards. And I just feel like people are mo- more prone to listen to it rather than if you Finding spend a six, year or two busting your butt working 16 on 16 tracks yeah, yeah and then you put it out cuz i did that once with a seven song ep and i still found like people aren't listening to all of these yeah um but would you say just you crave more you know to curate the vibe for 45 minutes versus just 3 minutes and 57 seconds or because your songs take people on a journey, and when you got the Solana shuffle on, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. it's very, very, very good. Yeah, they could all be from a project. Right on. I um. So far, I guess the more your collection grows, the more the spectrum will uh appear. You know what I'm For saying? Sure. You'll have more. These are dancey songs. These are <laughs> you know slow jam candle candlelight songs. Boink, yeah. Boinking songs, if you will. I was trying to avoid saying it. But <laughs> yes, that's exactly Damn candle it. Songs. That's exactly it. Um, so, yeah, in the longer form, yeah, what else do you crave about making a, a longer project? 
Um, I mean, I I think it's cooler. It's way more impressive. It's way more of an art form. I think. Definitely, I was, like the classic style, you know. Of course, like I like the singles, and I like to think about it that way. But definitely, a driving force behind that is like marketing myself. Mm-hmm. Trying to win that Grammy, baby. <laughs> yeah. If you're just win sitting, if you're just winning with us, <laughs> if you're just sitting down, joining us, we are sitting down with soon to be Grammy nominated artist Solana, S O L A N A, S O L A N. So yeah, sorry, yeah. I am off my rocker today. Follow him at Sola Escobar. Follow us at Sundogs TC. We're gonna take a quick break. Sundogs present local vibes. talking about before the break um pros and cons of singles and albums yeah um i want to switch it over to you know do you prefer more cinematic television shows you know 44 or 60 minute episodes or do you like the two and a half hour three hour film journey oh man i love that question um i would say film i guess um um but i I do love i don't know uh, maybe a decade since um things like breaking bad that kind of feel more like a movie exactly so you can still do the cinematic shots cinematic things yeah the caliber of acting and writing as a film in breaking bad episode to episode and then season to season I don't know if you guys checked out uh, Better Call Saul, but uh, it's, a, it's a hit. How much does, uh, what is it, Vince is it Vince Gilligan? Vince Gillian? How much does he do, how much is he involved with Better Call Saul? He, I, he's, uh, he Show produces it, directs, directs it, yeah. Yeah. Cool, just because singles versus albums got me thinking about television episodes versus films. Ah. And um, very intertwined. But in the miniseries mind. is definitely very prevalent nowadays. Yeah, I'll tell the you that. one one season and done. That's very very cool. And yeah, or it might be three hours long. Exactly. And it's just like yeah, we like doing this better. Until thirty years from now, when they revamp it, because they don't have ideas. <laughs> Got to revamp. <laughs> Any uh. upcoming performances? 
I do. I actually just got asked to do a B and E event at the Heck end yeah. <laughs> of August. So like Friday, August, the last Friday in August. I'll Very be doing exciting an event. Yeah, please keep us posted. I have your uh, management send us more info on that as it comes out. Slash, we should look up info on that. Uh, For sure. We'll put it in the notes but just so it, people yeah. aren't missing it. Yeah. Just so you little babies aren't missing it because yeah. we want you to go to the show. Oh, yeah. See you there. If you're just joining us again, you can f- listen to all of our archived episodes at anchor.fm slash local vibes or you can go to YouTube. Sun, excuse me, Sundogs TC. <laughs> follow Solana at Sola Escobar. Follow Sundogs at Sundogs TC. We're going to keep grilling you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we were talking about collaborations. We were talking about the way you like to um, write your songs or a preferred way that you've been yeah, getting into them, recently. Sure um the last interview we had on, I think you were mainly like when you were talking about the your collaborators. It was like you and I. For, I'm blanking Andy on the name. Boy Blue. No, from uh, uh, California. Uh, Brandon Butner. Brandon and uh, but now it's uh, you've got the the crew is growing. You're finding more uh, trusted artists or artists that you like working with over and over again. Um, <clears throat> so there's a studio, Green Tea Studio, shout out, um, in West Hollywood. I'd been there multiple times, but the most recent time I was there, I worked with their in-house engineer, so I didn't bring somebody. Um, and, uh, it was great. You know, it's just like another, I mean, he's very experienced and it was just another person to help lead me to like try new things that I hadn't done. And, um, it's good. Cause I do like making music alone, um, but it's good to like get an outside outsider's uh, perspective or advice to kind of push me to try something. Then and ends up being oh I really like when I work like this or I really like doing it like this and uh, pushes your creative skill further as well. Um, I can only imagine yeah someone who's not unattached to the project but. And their creativity and their passion just from a different way, you know, a different vein. Oh, yeah. I always look at it as, like, the, you know, if I, when I work with somebody, maybe there's, like, two or three things in those four hours that, like, are now a tool that I can take with me and then use myself in my own way. Um, did you ever um, think, like, did you, before you now have the positive experience of working with somebody else who's trying to like influence the final project, mm-hmm. um, did you think you were gonna like having an engineer being like, "Hey, I think we should uh, not have three courses at the end," or you know something like that? Did you think? Did you imagine yourself? Did you have any like negative ideas of like what that would be like if you let somebody start uh, fidgeting with stuff? I think so, yeah. I was, I mean, my music project grew very solo. Like, I was doing everything alone. Um, So, yeah, I think, like, kind of in my head, I was like, well, I know what I'm doing. I know what my vision is. How could somebody else know? Now it sounds like you would recommend to our listeners to at least try it, at least uh, uh, try to accept someone else's input, especially an experienced engineer. Absolutely, especially if you're starting out. Um, yeah, work with different people and like find what work, like what is creating the best and most interesting results. Um, yeah, because you never know. Yeah, I feel like I can definitely resonate with your uh, story of being going or wanting to do it all solo, and then um, yeah, the more I work with people, the better and better it. Uh feels you know what i'm saying and you can really like you can find somebody who your weakness is their strength mm-hmm. and then obviously the project can only get better from there yeah so it's, uh, i found with uh writing um uh, film that or writing with collaborative writing mm-hmm. no one's trying to make this bad yeah you that's, know that's and good. just i know i may be coming from left field with my suggestion 
but I'm not trying to ruin this piece. <laughs> so, and the same, I think, goes for music, where it's like, all right, this might not be what I had in mind, but in the end, it was the right decision to slow down the tempo 20 beats per minute for mm -hmm. 16 measures and then speed it back. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's nice. Of course. And uh, like uh, you were saying, it feels more like a team effort. It feels more fulfilling when we can all go, hey, we created that mm -hmm. versus I nitpicked over this um, <laughs> in my basement yeah, over and over and over by myself and was too prideful to accept anyone else's creative input. For sure. Exactly. Um, Any collaborations on the horizon that you can disclose? Uh, I guess, uh, like vocally, like having a, a local producer, a local vocalist, Twin Cities or Minnesota? Not currently. Well, this is very rough. Uh, so I have a couple beats from Minnesota Cold. Nice. And to kind of what I was saying with like this newfound, like I like to do it in the room. There's one beat that I got from him, and I was like, I think I'm just going to call him and be like, I want to write this like with you at your place. I didn't, I didn't ask him that yet, but um, I think I might take that route instead of like me just kind of like having it and writing to it periodically. Mm -hmm. I think I might try to go with him in like one night. Like, have write a session, the whole thing. have a vibe. Yeah. Extend it or shorten it, exactly. Yeah, because I've worked, I've made Solana songs over his beats three or four times and one of them in particular is like my best song <laughs> special so, is that the one that you like the best we did make that one uh the song that actually came out new year's day love me right oh is, is that your most popular or whatever it was very uh, yeah that one like hit my biggest numbers uh it's still, so cool yeah awesome to collaborate from another one of the minnesota community on that one for real he sends me beat packs and there's always yeah. one in there. I'm like, man, it's so dope. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, so you were saying last trip out to California was to, to Renando Beach to do the shoot, to do a little leisure. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. What? what uh, when were you first there? When were you hit with the vibe that is Redondo Beach? How? Why? Why does it influence you so much to make a piece of art about it? Um, so it was almost a year ago, exactly. Um, it was Corona, and I'd just gotten hit with that uh, Corona money. <laughs> oh, Stimmy. Oh, yeah. The artist's Stim best friend. Up. So I was like, well, let me look at these plane tickets. Oh, that's fairly affordable. Let me find a beach in L.A., and I just happened to find Redondo. Um, so that's where it was. That's where I wrote the song last year. And then kind of sat, it was very summery. So I was like, this isn't right to like release in like the fall or winter. And then, so I went back. Um, it's a beautiful place. I love it. It's so beautiful. Um, they got a big pier. So you can go on the pier with like restaurants and all that. Beautiful beach, a bunch of like dolphins really close. It was really, uh, it was gorgeous. Something magical. We're going to play that song here in about 15 seconds. Exactly. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, to uh, Sundogs Present Local Vibes. We had Salon in here. Thanks for coming in. We're going to yeah, listen yeah. to Redondo Beach. You're about to be transported. And then uh, Pink Champagne. Yes. Check out all Solana's music on... Or, a, 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 just look up Solana.
Don't you fret, don't you worry July 